Okay, thank you. So when when I was thinking, starting to think about what is the awakened masculine and where do we start in order to be uh, an awakened masculine or to awake the masculine within us, the first thing we need to do is kind of get an understanding of what are the external um, stimulators or the external, external messaging that is affecting us, affecting our subconscious, our unconscious, and is really uh, affecting the way we uh, meet life. So I've made a list, and um, so I'm going to go through them. And the, everything I talk about here today are things that have, it's all in my personal story. It's not, this is not coming from necessarily uh, different teachers. If it is, I will be talking, I will be making mesh, uh, mentioning to it. But the idea is that everything I speak about is my personal experience. So number one, I talk about pornography. So we really have to, as, as men, uh, as sexual beings, we really have to acknowledge the fact that uh, we are seeking out sexual uh, stimuli. It's an instinct. It's what we do. And with the rise of pornography, uh, it has completely changed the way men uh, have a relationship with uh, erotica and how that erotica is affecting the way we uh, interact, interact with the feminine. And once upon a time, uh, sexual uh, pornography uh, came at a premium and came with an effort. So if you wanted to uh, view or, or consume pornography, you had to go out, you had to go to a video store, you had to go to a uh, store to buy a magazine, you had to put out money, physical dollars, to uh, consume this, uh, the, this material. And um, I'm a, a child, I was born in the, in the, in the seven, late 70s, and I grew up in the excess of the 80s, and um, in the 90s, the mid-90s, 1995, the internet started to uh, explode. I was graduating from high school in 1995, uh, so I truly, truly, truly have an experience of what it was to uh, be a, a, a youth before internet pornography and a youth after internet. And I was deeply affected by pornography in my life. So um, in 1995, the internet becomes more available. Uh, we start consuming images and even images took time to download. So there was an effort, there was a time investment so it might not have been a financial or a resource. It was a time investment. You had to sit there and wait for pictures to load. It took forever. But then from that point on, internet got faster. You could get, you could download pictures quicker. You could then find pictures on any topic, and then video came came in, and you had you had to wait a long time for video. And then internet got faster, so video started coming downloading quickly. But you still potentially had to pay for it. And now. You could go on any website, any uh, hub, like Pornhub, whatever. I don't even want to start promoting them. But you could access any kink, any perversion, any whatever you want to call it, uh, sexual fantasy uh, at the tip of your fingers from the comfort of your own home or what's even worse, from a handheld device in an elementary school. So that is what I, I, I consider is the biggest change is accessibility to pornography. And as we have this accessibility to pornography, here, before I start, I, I move on, I just want to rattle off a couple of statistics. It says that 40% of boys between the grade uh, 4 and 11 are viewing pornography, one-third every day. Um, 6 out of 10 girls, 9 out of 10 boys are exposed to pornography be uh, before 18 years old. And 88% of the scenes in porn films contains acts of physical aggression, and 49% of uh, these scenes contain verbal uh, aggression. So what we have is a, a, a repetition and a, and a nailing through of what's going on. And we have men and uh, young boys and young girls consuming this material and definitely having it affect the way we interact with sexuality and we interact with the other gender. So we see a lot of objective, obviously objectification of the feminine, um, you know, uh, focusing 
um, on the, the, the parts of body, whether it be breast, lips, ass, you know, this is what's happening. And through the consumption of pornography, obviously it conditions our thoughts, it conditions our desires and our uh, sexual practices. And once again, I could say that as I went through this progression of 1995 and up, I saw the different trends of sexuality. I saw, you know, my father's pornography, which was like 70s, 80s type of pornography, which was quite light when we compare to the ramping up of the type of pornography we see in today's society, which is a lot about the objectification of the feminine. And I want to end with one uh, thought is that we think when we say sexual slavery, we, we consider sexual slavery something that's happening in India or Thailand and has to do with uh, uh, you know, prostitution. But the truth of the matter is sexual slavery is um, uh, defined as any type of sexual intercourse that uses po uh, power or money to take advantage of the situation. And a lot of the, the uh, trends of uh, pornography in today's day and age is the fact that they are there's men using finances and power to obtain sex for video for the internet